Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 fascinating facts about the Mars Candy Company. Young or old, we all love candy, and the Mars Company has been making some of the most popular and beloved candy bars and confections for as long as most of us can remember. They are known around the world for beloved items like the Mars Bar, Snickers, M&Ms, and so many others. However, they are also suppliers of more than just candy. Mars owns multiple popular pet food brands, as well as the Wrigley Company and several other brands. The history of the Mars Company and their products is a fascinating journey through the land of sweets. Number 10. The Milky Way in the US is the Mars Bar in the United Kingdom. Those who live in the United States are very familiar with a candy bar known as the Milky Way. It is made up of nougat and caramel coated in chocolate and is incredibly delicious. The name is actually inspired by the fact that the creator was trying to mimic the popular malted milkshakes of the day and not really inspired by our galaxy, as some might imagine. Many people who love this candy bar may take it for granted when traveling, only to find that it doesn't exist in quite the same form in other parts of the world. In the United Kingdom and almost everywhere else it is sold, besides the USA, there is a very similar bar, although not made with the exact same ingredients, known as the Mars Bar. It replaces the traditional Milky Way in these regions. To make matters even more confusing, you may actually see a candy bar called the Milky Way when traveling abroad, but that version of the Milky Way is actually the European version of the American Three Musketeers Bar. And yes, all of these are produced, sold, and marketed by the Mars Candy Company. Number 9. The Three Musketeers has its name because it was once three flavors packaged together. Many Many people have wondered why in the world the Three Musketeers bar has the name that it does. It is a chocolate bar filled with nougat very similar to that in a milky way, except airier and fluffier. It enjoys a certain strong popularity of its own in the United States, but that doesn't bring most people any closer to an explanation. Most people cannot be blamed for not knowing either the package no longer has any of the Three Musketeers on the logo. The reason Candy Bar has this name is because originally it was packaged to share with three separate pieces, and each piece had a different flavor. Chocolate vanilla and strawberry. Not long ago, some of you may remember that the Mars Company released a set of three promotional mini Three Musketeer candies with the flavors of cappuccino, French vanilla, and strawberry as a throwback to their roots. It would certainly be interesting if they brought back the original Three Musketeers with all three bars wrapped in the same package. It would probably be a huge hit. Number 8. The Mars Company also owns pet food brands Pedigree and Whiskers. When most people think of a candy company, pet food is probably not something that immediately comes to mind. However, the Mars Candy Company has owned several pet food brands for many years, including the well-known Pedigree dog food brand and Whiskers cat food brand. Some might imagine that this was simply part of a strategic acquisition or some deal, but Mars is very serious about their pet food business and has been going to great lengths to increase their market share and dominate in that sector. Just a few years ago, in 2014, Mars coughed up almost $3 billion in cash to Procter & Gamble to buy up most of their existing pet food businesses, which includes brands such as Iams, Nutura, and Ekanuba. The president of their pet care division was excited about the deal and had this to say, The deal reinforces our leadership in pet nutrition and veterinary science. We're not saying that the Mars Company doesn't own good pet food brands, but we don't think what most people know Mars for is pet food. Most people aren't even aware that they own pet food brands at all, and know them mainly for their popular candy products such as M&Ms and Snickers. Number 7. During World War II, M&Ms were only for soldier rations. M&Ms have a fascinating history that is steeped in the lore of wartime. It is said that initially, Forrest Mars Sr. had witnessed troops in the Spanish Civil War eating chocolate that was encased in a hard candy shell. He noticed that the chocolate was managing to avoid entirely melting in the hot temperatures, and he decided he wanted to perfect the idea into a perfect candy. He approached a man named Murray, who worked as an executive for Hershey's and struck up a partnership. Incidentally, their two names are what M&Ms stand for. With World War II starting, Mars saw an opportunity and started selling the candy exclusively in soldier rations for the duration of the war. The troops found it very convenient, as it was easily packaged in small tubes and didn't melt easily in the heat, making it easy to preserve and transport in the thick of troop movements. Eventually, the war ended and all the veterans were already big fans of the product. With chocolate no longer rationed and veterans introducing it to their family and friends, M&Ms became a runaway success. Number 6. The Snickers Bar was actually named after a horse. The Snickers bar is easily the most iconic candy in the United States of America. No one really needs an introduction to this perfect candy bar. Not only great tasting, but filling enough and with real peanuts, which could make it feel more like a real snack, it has enjoyed incredible popularity in the United States since its inception. 
but most people never stop to think where the name actually comes from. Mars candy bars have rather odd fanciful names that we never take time to think about. Probably in the case of Snickers, we don't think about it too much because it sounds rather strange and doesn't seem like it has much to do with candy at all. The reason for this is that the Snickers bar is named after the Mars's family's favorite horse at the time, and they thought it would be fun to name the candy bar after him. There is really nothing connecting the candy and the horse besides a flight of whimsy. Strangely though, the name was once again different when it was marketed in the United Kingdom, where it was originally known as the Marathon Bar and enjoyed popularity at the top spot for many years. However, for continuity's sake, Mars changed the name worldwide to the Snickers Bar and sales in the UK dropped significantly. Generally, consumers don't take well to a product's name being changed after so many years. Number 5. Mars got into a dust-up with vegetarians in the United Kingdom Back in 2007, vegetarians got very angry over a small amount of potential animal rennet in their confections. Mars told the public that they were switching from a form of whey that came from microorganisms to a form that came from rennet, an animal byproduct taken from the stomach of calves. After a week of criticism, Mars agreed to back down on using it in some of their products, but was also unwilling to pull it from all of their products entirely. This left many people who were following a strict vegetarian lifestyle angry with the company. They felt that Mars was not entirely backing down, and also that there was still confusion over what did and what did not include animal rennet. The reason for this is that there was no recall, as too many products had already gone out and there wasn't any health risk with them. So many vegetarians complained that even though the company was leaving a few product lines without the way with animal rennet, that there was no way to know for quite some time if they might be eating one of the vegetarian unsuitable versions that had already shipped out. Mars argued in return that there hadn't been any boycott or noticeable effect on their sales, and that they were already bending over backwards to please a small minority. Number 4. Mars owns Uncle Ben's Rice and has tried to smooth over the controversially racial roots. Another brand you may be surprised to know is owned by Mars is Uncle Ben's Instant Rice. An incredibly famous product, ubiquitous in grocery stores around the United States and like the other parts of the world as well, everyone knows the image and many of us feel a little strange knowing the likely origin of the image. Similar to Aunt Jemima's pancake syrup brand, it pictures an African American in a role that depicts them as a servant preparing food for white people. The clothes worn by both of them and the title used, as well as a lack of any last name, tends to give a lot of people misgivings about the brand. When Mars acquired Uncle Ben's not so many years ago, they decided that they wanted to change the image to uplift the brand from its controversially racial origins. They put together a marketing campaign where Uncle Ben was depicted as the chairman of the board of his company, in a fancy office overseeing all decisions regarding the product. The advertising campaign depicted him as a wise leader who always knows best, while still leaving him with the bow tie that he was known for. The reactions from many African Americans were mixed. Some people felt it was a good step that helped to rehabilitate the image of the brand, but others said it felt like it was glossing over the past and trying to hold on to something that they would prefer goes away. To Mars's credit, most people seem to feel that an honest effort was being made to overcome the racially charged past of the brand. Number 3. The Reese's Pieces in E.T. was supposed to be M&M's, but the Mars company declined. E.T. is an iconic movie and one of the most well-known scenes, as well as one of the most famous product placements ever in movies, was the scene with Reese's Pieces. We all know it well, and someone at Hershey's is probably still gloating over the acquisition of a lifetime. See, the original candy to be used in the film were M&M's, and Mars was approached about doing a tie-in deal with the movie. In a move that some may still be kicking themselves for, the Mars company declined to have M&M's in the movie or do any kind of marketing deal. Some people claim that the executive who made the decision didn't want their product in a movie with a strange alien being. Others say that they didn't think the movie was going to be successful and didn't want to tie their brand to it. Whatever the reason, the Mars company declined and the filmmakers were stuck looking for an alternative. Realizing there was a similar but not as popular candy made by Hershey's, they struck a deal to use Reese's Pieces instead. The movie was successful beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Hershey's was able to use E.T. in their advertising to create a very successful association in the minds of consumers, and sales of Reese's Pieces shot up by a huge margin, gaining a strong share in the market that they had never had before. Number 2. Mars has been criticized in the past for their chocolate buying practices. Mars and all the other major chocolate giants have had a huge problem that is pretty hard to ignore. 
The fact that they're chocolate, and essentially all chocolate, comes from countries where child labor, abuse, and oftentimes what amounts to outright slavery are incredibly common. This has been the subject of many documentaries, and lawmakers have tried to force the chocolate industry into self-policing and helping to end child labor practices. After all, the chocolate industry is so rich it dwarfs the economies of the countries that it buys the chocolate from, so the power is mainly in their hands. Many of the chocolate makers have pledged to try and end child labor, but the goalposts keep shifting. For many people, the major chocolate makers such as Mars, Nestle, and Hershey's are not doing nearly enough to deal with the issue. One of the original deadlines to majorly curb child labor was back in 2005, but the deadline was then extended to 2008 and then 2010. When 2010 came around, the major manufacturers of chocolate candy made a new pledge to reduce child labor in the Ivory Coast by 70% by 2020. Not only is that another 10 years away, but that isn't even three quarters of the child labor reduced. It would seem that companies that have more money than the economies they are buying from could do a little more to prevent child labor and exploitation. Number 1. Mars and other companies have moved recently to remove artificial dyes from their products. Recently, many companies in the food industry have moved to start removing artificial dyes. One of the most famous examples is the move by Kraft to use only natural coloring in their famous instant macaroni and cheese products. What may be more surprising is that candy companies are starting to follow suit, despite not being generally known for trying to appeal to the health conscious. This shows that consumers today are increasingly concerned about artificial ingredients, even when indulging in less than healthy snacks. Mars specifically made the news in 2016 when they promised to remove all artificial artificial dyes from their human products and move to more natural options. They did add the caveat that this will not happen right away. They expect to finish removing all artificial dyes in five years, but they are still looking for some of the best natural alternatives, and it will take time to cycle old inventory out and bring in the new. This includes any Wrigley products such as Starburst and any other food lines, but does not include any pet products at this time. While this may not seem huge, moving towards natural dyes can only be a good thing. More and more studies seem to suggest that many artificial dyes are dubious in terms of whether they are true truly safe to be consuming on any kind of regular basis. A natural alternative that is proven safe would make people feel better about what they are eating in a world with increasingly processed foods and ingredients. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.